What's up, strugglers? Um, can somebody help me figure out what the frick I should do with this wall? I've wanted to put something back there for months now, but I can't think of any ideas that I love. Um, so if you send me an idea and I end up using it, I'll credit you somehow. This whole video is based around something that I saw when I was in elementary school, and it got me thinking about all of the other schools in my area when I was growing up. And I randomly remembered that there's a school in Dickinson whose mascot is literally the midgets. The midgets? Are you kidding me? <laughs> what the, the midgets? By far the most bizarre school mascot I've ever heard of. I just wanted to share that. I thought you guys might like that. Okay, let's begin. When I was a kid, there were three things that I hated, okay? Arts and crafts, going to baseball practice, and bullies. Hey Scott, do you wanna make a collage? No. Let's all line up and take some grounders. Not interested. We should bully the new kid until something tragic happens and then we have to take a deeper look at the consequences of our actions until we finally realize that we're stronger together than we are apart. Excuse me, what? At my elementary school, we had a lady whose name was Mrs. Kangas and she was our school counselor. Um, I never interacted with her except for one time in fourth grade when she asked me to help her figure out how to work the, the VCR. She came into our class to talk about bullying. Um, it was part of a program that was pretty similar to the D.A.R.E. program, if you've heard of that. All the kids would be gathered up every week or two during school and the faculty would just talk to us about how bullying is bad and it's, it hurts people's feelings and we shouldn't do it, you know, all that. Before I move on, actually, on a side note, if you haven't seen Eddie Burback's video on the D.A.R.E. program, you should definitely watch it because it's very very good. Our anti-bullying program ran on and off all the way through my senior year of high school, so they were not kidding around with this. I went to a school in a small town and my graduating class only had 47 people in it, so I can only speak for myself and for my class, but I kind of feel like that small size um, kind of deterred people from bullying. We all knew pretty much everything about each other, and by the time we graduated, most of us were very close with one another, and even if you weren't close with somebody, if you were the mean kid in a group of only 47 people, you kind of sucked. You know, <laughs> nobody likes the mean kid. But back when we were just wee little lads, we had a tiny little bullying problem with one or two kids in our class. I don't even think they were necessarily bullies. They were just kind of the kids that didn't understand that what they were doing was hurtful. Like they were either trying to be funny or they were trying to be cool and they just didn't realize what they were doing. So I didn't think it was much of a problem, but our school decided to scare us straight anyway. So I remember our guidance counselor, Mrs. Kangas, came into our fourth grade classroom one day and popped in a VHS to try to convince us all to be nice to one another. And I'm not gonna lie to you guys, the video scarred me for life. <laughs> so I thought it might be fun to scar all of you as well, you know? If I have to suffer, y'all might as well suffer with me. I mean, let's be real. What do you say, you wanna be scarred? Come on, let's go. Can I, yeah, yeah, I, knew, I knew you would, let's go. Ah, oh, the broken toy. So this movie was part of a series created by the National Center for Youth Issues and it was published by Marco Products Incorporated back in the early 2000s. Apparently a bunch of schools across the country showed these videos to their students and the reason I know that is because the comment section under the video that I found was just flooded with people saying that they remember seeing this when they were in elementary school. And I know that they were from other schools because none of these people are my classmates. I only had 47 classmates. I don't recognize any of these names. I just wanna point out that on the Marco Products website, it says, we publish only those materials which have been developed by practicing professionals and we are truly proud of the fact that we can bring to you what we consider to be the best and most reasonably priced selection of materials on the market. So you know how I said I found this video on YouTube? Well, Marco Products is still selling it on their website in DVD and VHS form for $50. $50! To kind of put that into perspective, you can purchase Avengers Endgame, which is the number one movie of all time. It's a visual and technical masterpiece for $29.99 right now. <laughs> so keep that in mind as we're watching and let me know when we get to the end if you think this movie is worth $50. And I already know the goofus is over at Marco Products Incorporated are probably gonna try to be slick and copyright claim this video, so listen up really quick. This is a commentary video and it's protected under fair use. Ethan and Hila didn't spend half a million in legal fees just for you to come around and claim our freaking videos. Stop breaking the law. 
Okay, let's get started. The movie starts off with just a deafening silence and this really spooky text that I don't like at all. And then this plucky like soldier music starts to play and we get even more text. You know how much fourth graders like to speed read. <laughs> Raymond Thomas is a 12 year old boy who lives alone with his grandmother. He's a very shy boy, a very quiet boy. The kind of boy that Michael Myers and Troy Matthews love to pick on. I'm sorry, what the f Michael Myers? Michael Myers? No wonder this kid doesn't wanna to go to school. There's a gosh darn serial killer on the loose. When the video actually starts, we get a montage of Raymond sitting in class, just minding his own business, and the two bullies, you know, they're picking on him, throwing paper at his head, chuckling under their breath, slamming his head into a locker, you know, classic Michael Myers. Honestly, for all the dumb things I'm about to point out in this video, that head slam, oh man, that looked legit. <laughs> They didn't hold back. This kid really got his bell rung. So everyone goes out to recess and then that's when the real shit starts to happen. All the bullies are gathered around in the baseball field and for some reason, Raymond decides to go over there. I'm not trying to say what's about to happen is entirely Raymond's fault, but Avoid the bullies, dude. <laughs> just don't go over to their spot. We had a separate school just for kindergartners and first graders when I was little. And I remember when I was a kindergartner, there was always one group of first graders that always hung out by the big blue rolly slides on the far end of the playground. And I always wanted to go down the rolly slides because I would see the first graders doing it while they were standing up. Are you freaking kidding me? Standing up? They were like surfing the slide. They would, they would surf down the freaking rolly slide. I thought that was so cool, but anytime a kindergartner tried to go over there, the first grader would scare him away. Kindergartners weren't allowed over there. It was like, it was an unwritten rule. So I always avoided that part of the playground when I was a kindergartner until I was a first grader, and then I was the king of the freaking rolly slides. So Raymond knows that the kids that like to beat the hell out of him hang out on the baseball field, is it really too crazy to suggest that maybe he just doesn't go over to the baseball field? Okay, you can hear the kids saying, what are you doing in our territory? Leave, Raymond. <laughs> Just go somewhere else, man. But Raymond's a glutton for punishment. So he sticks around, he gets bullied some more. They call him names. They try to shove a candy bar in his mouth. It's a whole thing, you know, typical bully stuff. Okay, that's all fine and dandy. I'm on board with the video so far. My little fourth grade brain understands what's going on. I get it, okay. But this next part is the part that scarred me. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, hold on. <laughs> hold on. I have such a vivid memory of this scene being really gory and realistic. And I have such a clear memory of a close-up shot of a severed foot still inside the shoe, covered in blood. Why do I have that memory? That never happened. The shot doesn't exist. Was I just super dumb? Was I hallucinating? Why did this scene have such a huge impact on me? Why did it stick with me all these years? This fucking sucks. <laughs> $50, by the way. Good deal. It's not fun, not having any friends. It's not fun leaving a classroom and know that you're gonna be picked on, pushed around. It's been a real tragedy. What's happened to Raymond. Oh my God, that's a horrifying image. This whole thing looks and feels like an in memoriam slideshow or something. <laughs> I will remember you. Will you remember me? Don't let your life. Okay, yeah, that's enough of that. <laughs> All these years later, that's what I remember happening. I remember Raymond dying. You guys don't know much about Raymond, do you? Well, I'll tell you a little bit about him. Uh, he lost his whole family in a car accident three years ago. He lost his mom, he lost his dad, and his brother. Good lord, guys, why don't you just throw his dog in there too? Also, how do these kids not know that? How do they not know that his entire family was killed in a car accident? That seems like something that literally everybody would know. His whole family died in a car accident. Dude, news travels fast, okay? This is, this is elementary school. He has feelings. You guys treated him like a plaything, like a toy. Now he's a broken toy. Yeah. 
But the twist is, of course, that Raymond actually survived this accident. And when he comes back to school, all of a sudden, all the bullies are really nice to him now. And they're his friends now. That's a nice heartwarming little message. We all love a happy ending. Again, I'm not entirely sure why I distinctly remember Raymond dying in this movie. Um, probably has something to do with the emotional trauma that this caused me when I was little. So when I was looking this video up online and doing some research about Marco products and the NCYI, I actually found that they made a few of these videos, all of which are $50 by the way. And I thought it would be fun for me to just check out a couple of those while I was at it. Well. What I found when I was doing that is that all of them use the most intense scare tactics to try to get kids to be nice to each other. You'll see what I mean by that in a second, but first let's check out this movie simply titled Scars. Uh, it's about a 12 year old kid named Christopher whose mom recently died of cancer. You're kind of short, aren't you? Aren't you ever going to grow? Is everybody in your family that short? What are you going to do? You going to cry about it? Why don't you go cry to your mommy? That's right. You ain't got a mommy. Oh. Dude, the kids in these movies are just brutal. Great camera work, by the way. Real top-notch cinematography there. I want you to go on the school before we decide to beat you up. <laughs> I don't have anything to say about that. I just, I really wanted you to see that transition. So this is Billy. He's the school bully. Um, Billy the bully. <laughs> Wow. But apparently Billy is also a very popular seventh grader. And in true overly dramatic educational video fashion, his life is gonna change forever tonight. So Billy's mom gives him a stern talking to because she finds out that Billy's been bullying Christopher about his mom dying. I don't know why he acted this way. He knows better. Um, you can be sure that I will discuss this with him. What's, what's going on? For real. You do not want to test me, young man. You know who just called me? No. Bobby, your friend Bobby? His he, mother just called. He's not my friend. She was really upset. It seems you boys have been tormenting Christopher Nelson about not having a mother. Why would you do that? It's just a little fun. A little fun? Yeah. You think it is fun to tease somebody about not having a mother? Everything that you do is a reflection of your father and I. <laughs> oh wow, she is loving this. It really sounds like a mom scolding her son. I mean, for all the horrible acting in these videos, this lady's killing it right now. So Billy goes up to his room and when his dad gets home, he's also gonna have a talk with his son. But for some reason, Billy is playing with a freaking homemade flamethrower. And, um, well, you'll see. What's the difference between frogs and toads? Mom, what's going on up there? From my point of view, I think Billy did want to harm himself. At 532, we see him reading the can. On the can, it would state not to get near open flame. Unless Billy is a little dense in the head, I think in all honesty, he tried to hurt himself. Kids can be mad when someone takes things like videos, movies, boys. Pretty compelling argument there, I must say. So long story short, Billy got burnt to an absolute crisp, and now he's the one that's being bullied. Karma's a bitch. Janet kids? Well, for one final feel-good twist, which these videos always need to have, uh, Christopher actually ends up being the one that stands up for Billy. Hey, look, everyone! Pizza face! <laughs> <laughs> what do you want, you little dweeb? What'd you do to Billy? It really bites. No one here has a guest to tell you, so I thought I would. <laughs> what did you just say to me? Get off of him. He's right. How would you feel if you were like Billy? I agree. That was unfair. Yeah. 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 This is like when those idiots online write a post that's obviously fake just to make themselves feel better. My old white math teacher was saying how girls these days wear too much makeup. Uh, so the quiet girl in my class, she stood up and she wrote in bright pink makeup on the whiteboard, uh, screw you, and then she just left the room and everybody started clapping. This is where all those pathological liars got their ideas for those posts. Nice. So Billy becomes Christopher's friend, he stops being a bully, yada yada yada, all that stuff, okay? You, you see what I'm talking about? How it follows the same type of formula? I'm not gonna make you watch m very much of this one, but the company made another one 
uh, and it's called Joey and it follows those same types of themes. This scrawny kid gets bullied by some psychopaths at school. They make his life miserable for seemingly no reason. Hey, what's up, Joey? What's in the bag? J just some groceries. What's in the bag, Joey? Let's see what we got here in the bag. You got a problem, Joey? The bullies end up getting a stern talking to. How would you boys feel waking up for school every morning sick to your stomach, ready to puke your guts out because there's some boys at school waiting to torment you? I don't think you'd like that very much. Those kids are lucky. I don't know where they live. Because two things would happen tonight. Those idiots would be in the hospital and I'd be in jail. <laughs> Holy crap, you go, Dad. Then one of the bullies comes to his senses and decides that being mean is bad. Can't believe that little dweeb told. Yeah, what a geek. We should really mess him up. Right, Chris? Man, Joey's gonna wish he never opened his little crybaby mouth. Yeah, tough guy. Mess him up. Beat him to a bloody mess. Forget everything Romero told us. Joey could have got us nailed. I mean, really nailed. But he didn't. He ain't stupid. A little wuss, maybe, but he ain't stupid. What's that supposed to mean? Because he knows we'll kick his butt. Right, Chris? I'm tired of hearing your mouth. Forget about this weekend. Forget about everything. Oh, forget about him. You can hang with me this weekend. Oh, goody. <laughs> And then, the wild twist that you don't want to miss. And this one is especially juicy. Hi, what can I do for you? Where's Joey at? He hasn't been here all week. Well, his dad called me on Friday and thought it would be a good idea if the family got away for the week. When's he coming back? I'm going to have to tell the rest of the school this anyway. Might as well go ahead and tell you now. I'm afraid I've got some bad news for you. You see, Joey's family was involved in a car accident. His little sister was killed instantly. I'm afraid that Joey died on the way to the hospital. Look, I'm sorry, son. Bravo. <laughs> Bra flippin' vo. Scare tactics. That's the way you gotta reach the youth, okay? You gotta make them think that the unspeakable is gonna happen in order to get them to make <laughs> the right choices. Marco Products is selling these videos for $50 each. 50 freaking dollars. That's $150 for all three of those that we just grazed over today. You could buy the first nine seasons of SpongeBob on DVD for that much. That is arguably more educational and definitely more entertaining. I'm probably only gonna make a couple of bucks on this YouTube video. And that's if the NCYI or Marco Products doesn't copyright claim it. Clearly I'm in the wrong business here. I need to get into the business of educational kids videos. So that's what I'm gonna do. Did you know kids of all ages and even adults have trouble making friends? There's more people out there than you probably notice. But there's an easy way to change that. To fix this, you can join a club, a sports team, drama, just about anything. And did you know that there are more people out there that have similar interests as you, but you don't even know them? So get out there and meet some new people. You'll be sure to have a good time. Let's stay away from drugs. Yeah, drugs are bad. So that'll be available for purchase on VHS or DVD. <laughs> Only $50. That's a great price, teachers. It'll also be on my Patreon if you wanna show your class and end this bullying epidemic once and for all. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if you came here from Mr. GG, I just wanna say welcome. Uh, I'm not gonna be making any dark web mystery box videos anytime soon, um, but hopefully you stick around anyway. What's your favorite school lunch, by the way? I was always a fan of Dunkers, Chili Crispitos, and Chicken Pasta Bake. I don't know if that was just a kindred thing, or if everybody had those, but 
Those were my favorites. Anyway, let me know. <laughs> All right, I will talk to you again very soon. Goodbye.